previously we've used the sketch render engine in order to create something that looks like an outline drawing. Maybe it's supposed to look like a hand drawn sketch. Something that's got lines, something that's got hatching, and something that's got shadows. That can work. The problem with the sketch engine is that it's an exported image. It's pixels. And it can be a little bit fiddly to get the sketch settings to not look too sketchy, to get it to look a little bit more professional. So this version, this option, which we do as a 3D document, we can make it look less professional if we want to, but it tends to just look cleaner. So generally speaking, I now use this option instead of the sketch render setting. So what is it? What are we talking about? I'm going to work backwards and explain this in a process. So what? how would we want it to be explained? We'd probably want to save it onto a layout. So therefore, in order to get it on the layout, the best way to do that is to save it as a save view. So if we skip back a level, back to our view map, then we have a, a saved view. What is it a saved view of and, and what are those view settings? So when we go into the view settings, we see that it's a layer combination, I've called it 3D. That's just one that I've created. The scale doesn't really matter. Some of these matter in terms of representation because we're actually drawing with lines. The pen set actually matters in this case. And these matter to a degree. Some of the things are shown, some of the things not necessarily because it's a 3D drawing. So it's a bit of a mix, right? It's, it's a 3D drawing. It's of a 3D element but it's using some 2D settings. We get this from our 3D document. So I'm back now in the project map. So this is where we create it, and this is where we define the settings. So again, I'm working backwards, and I'll work forward. So I'm explaining this one to you, but then I'll create one from the start so you can see how it's built. So when we go into the settings, 3D document settings, we see it looks very much like a elevation or a section, and we set up the drawing or the settings very much like a elevation or a section. So under our model display, of course, that's what it's all about in this instance. And we don't have, um, well, we still have cut elements and cut and uncut elements, sort of like in a section or in like in, like in an elevation. And you can do a lot of different things with these. I'm just showing you the way that I do it. And maybe you want to base it on the same. And then if you feel like experimenting from there, go from there. So in terms of the cut fill, what do I want to see? Cut fill as in settings, we could change that to uniform structure, we could change that to own surface colours or own surface colours shaded, again, exactly the same as a section marker. And of course, mostly, I'm not really seeing anything in section. So when would I be? If I was doing a 3D sectional cutaway, that's when I'd want to be very particular about how this function works. I'd probably want to be using something like a uniform surface so then I could be creating a particular look maybe I'd use a solid fill or something like that just to make it look like I was cutting through something that it was solid black or solid red or solid white and maybe that was just so I could Photoshop it later or, or just to look I guess simpler not highly detailed in terms of my uncut element, I've definitely changed that to uniform pen color. The uncut surface pen, so let's say that's walls and slabs and roofs, that's all based on white. So pen 19 is white. And then we have uniform pen for uncut elements. So now we're talking about the lines or the edges. So that's a uniform pen color. I'm using two. In this case, I'm not using one because we see it's based on a line thickness. So depending on the complexity of what I'm viewing and the thickness of the line I'd want to represent it, and this is where scale is important because the scale will change depending on how we um, use pens. If I'm using pen 2, which is 2 millimeters, at 1 to 50 versus if I'm using it 1 to 200, of course, we're, we're usually zooming in or zooming out to justify that scale. That pen weight makes a big difference. It'll either look very thick on the screen or very, very thin on the screen. I want to see vectorial hatching. What's the vectorial hatching? We're talking about the horizontal lines of the weatherboard. And we see 
That's a tick box. There's not additional settings for this one. In our sketch render we could change those settings. We could make that a, a thinner pen or a less dense pen I think is the way that it was defined in that view. And we can add in transparency. So what are we talking about transparency? We're talking about the windows and doors that are made of glass. So if I add that in, let's update this model. I may not actually have um, this glass is very transparent, which is why that wouldn't work. Come back to that later. So transparency, we can turn on, and then sun shadows, we can view these in different ways. So it's currently turned on, and then I'm choosing to use a 50%, which means I'm using a black pen, but because it's 50%, it's turning gray. Of course, if I change that to something like 25%, that's going to make that a lighter gray. So depending on what you like the look of, that looks okay. Sometimes even darker looks quite good as well, very bold. I'm not sure that I'd go 100%, but something bolder can look good. It depends really on how well defined or what that shadow is being cast on. And maybe it depends on the architecture as well. If it's um, meant to be bold and brutalist or if it's meant to be softer. Now because this is meant to be a Hamptons type style, country type style, of course it's an Australian version of Hamptons, not true Hamptons, it doesn't really work. It's, it's too bold, it's too um, strong. So more of 50%. I prefer percentage fills but of course we could change that to a vectorial line fill to get a different type of effect depending on what we're trying to do. They all work in different ways. So these are our settings, this is what we do, and of course we can redefine, if we went back into that setting, we can see that we can redefine 3D projection and redefine filter elements. So if we went into our 3D window, into our generic perspective, we can then change the view. So we can go view, 3D view options, we can change what we see here. That's of course not going to really have a big impact on my 3D document because it's really created in a different way. We're talking about a different engine. Elements in 3D view, so we could cut away some elements or filter, cut out a story. Or of course we could just redefine our view by changing it, by moving out or moving in or using the orbit tool to move around or using our explore tool to move our head or walk forward or walk back. So we can redefine the views in different ways. And what we might want to do is have a couple of renders, a couple, a couple of options. So if I move this around here from the different angle, that looks a bit silly, let's try to fix that up. So I'm on the different side. Now when I'm on the other side, of course, it would also be nice to move the sun around. So we can go view, 3D view options, 3D projection settings, and I could just manually move the sun around. Of course, I'm sort of faking sun in this instance, but that still gives me the effect that I'm after. It doesn't need to completely be real. And then I can define a new 3D based on those settings. So I can go to 3D document now, we see this is a folder, just like our worksheets or our details or our sections elevations are a folder. Right click, new 3D document from 3D, 3D document settings. So we can go in and change the settings first if we want to, or we can create one and then edit the settings. New 3D document from 3D. What are we going to call it? So we'll call this, this particular orientation is Northeast 3D. So that's going to generate. We see that it had different base settings. So we're now going to need to go in and edit those settings and we probably want it to look similar to the other one. So of course the other way to do it would have been to save those settings first to make sure that we were using the same settings and then generate it. There's always different options and ways Can to you do, do things. That by duplicating the yes. 3D document and then updating the, the Exactly. So we could duplicate the document and then redefine the orientation. That would be a smarter way of doing that in order to keep those Same. settings. So we can go into these settings here and now adjust these settings as they were before. So let's do it the other way around. 
Let's go to our 3D front west so we don't have to change the settings. Uh, we'll go to our generic perspective from here or duplicate first. Duplicate 3D document. We'll change this to 3D front east. Of course, it's exactly the same view. Now we'll let's go and edit this view. So we'll change back to this one. And then we can right click on our 3D front east, 3D document settings, redefine 3D projection. So we can move that around if we want to, or redefine the projection cutting planes based on the current 3D window. So that's now rebuilt that based on our current 3D window, the, the window that we already defined. So we can do that in any uh, format or any process that we, we can achieve the same results. Now that's just a project map. So if we now want to save that as a save view, we have to redo that process. Now that's not a hard process. Into our view map, when we set this up well, we make it easy to define. So it's currently under my 3D documents. Now there's something here called worksheets. That's basically in the wrong place. So let's move that out of the way. Under my 3D drawings, save current view. 3D front east. We'll sit next to 3D front west. That helps to make sense of what we're doing. And again, just like we use this drawing to define the other one, we can do this in the same way if we want to. It really doesn't matter. But sometimes I like doing this. Not so much with 3Ds, that doesn't make sense. But particularly with floor plans, it's a good idea. So let's make a new layout. New layout. Create. We'll adjust the setting of this. Custom ID, same as the other one. Rename a 9001, we'll just call it viz for now, and we will, we can either, let's try both of these methods, let's select this, copy, I like sometimes doing like the one that doesn't work as well first just to explain why. So we'll bring this in and then we'll update this view. So link this drawing to, because all we're talking about is a viewport. We're talking about a window into our model somewhere. So right click, link drawing to, and so we're now going to redefine this to our 3D front east. And there we go. Now we might find that it's fairly well centered, which is nice, but it's not perfectly centered in the drawing. So if that's annoying, then of course we can just basically do the other way. We just drag and drop the saved view. And saved views tend to work that the saved view will define the shape as it's supposed to be. So we see it's completely in the format of the window. Now, why would I do it the other way? When I'm talking about floor plans, I very deliberately want to have floor plans in exactly the same view. So that way I have my lower ground floor, upper ground floor, first floor, roof, or whatever it is, all stacked directly on top of each other. So that's why I'd do that link drawing too, again, in a section or an elevation or a 3D. It doesn't make as much sense. So I can do a few things. Uh, it's a 3D drawing, so scale does not matter. So I can resize it, and I can do that the maybe the dodgy way, the, the way that I tell you, don't ever do this. So I could change this to stretch if I wanted to, and say, well, let's stretch that down a little bit so it's showing me maybe less of the drawing, and then I can bring that in, redefining the, sorry, redefining this, let's use the drag commands this time. Let's bring it in so it's fitting the page a bit more. Don't want it too high. And then I could fix this up at the front. It looks silly, right? Because I can see stuff that I shouldn't be able to see. I'm seeing the edge of the model. Why is that? Because I haven't drawn a neighboring side. I haven't drawn the street. I haven't drawn context. So of course I could just not be lazy and draw the context. Or I can cheat a little bit. And at the moment that's what I'm going to do. So I can just cut it off. I can just cut off this edge. Uh, now, this doesn't make a lot of sense. This is obviously a little bit strange Which here. Which is why when you copied the other one, 
Yes. Uh, okay, I couldn't work out why it came with all these weird angles. Yeah. I was like, what is that? So this is helping us to just get a nicer, straighter edge. So I could do it just like that, that's fine, and if I wanted to be pedantic, I could do it the other way as well. Now this isn't too dangerous, um, I'm basically masking, I'm not actually affecting the model. If I redefined my view, that could end up making that look a bit silly, but for the sake of, what is it, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, as opposed to having to model neighboring sites, that's really good. When would that not be a good idea? If I wanted to use this to cast shadows. So if I wanted to cast shadows onto the neighboring property, I understand how that worked, then it'd be better, of course, to, to create the 3D model, create another terrain mesh, or um, sometimes I just mirror a terrain mesh just to make my life easy, um, in order to be able to see what the neighboring property is doing and how the shadows work on it. So that's the process. So our 3D document is found under 3D document. We create that as a view. We change the settings very much like we do with an elevation or a section. We save that as a save view in our view map. I've created a folder here. We can place it on a layout. And then of course the point is we can then go and make any change. So let's do something here. A lot of stuff, isn't it? Let's go, just to make this easy, we'll grab this balustrade and copy a balustrade down here and stretch this across. It took me a scary amount of time to, to fix that balustrade to look as good as it does. I really do not like the new rail tool. So then we can go to our 3D drawing, and it doesn't matter if it's the save view or the project map view, it at all gives us the same information. We see that it automatically updates. Mm -hmm. So what are we talking about? We're talking about a sketch render that is auto rebuilding. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to re-render or regenerate the views every time we want to create it. The one thing I can see wrong just from here is that it needs to be set at minus something, minus 100 or, or whatever my slab is set at. So now it's sitting on the ground. There we go. And of course, in our layout, it may or may not, depending on the settings, auto update. But if we right click, update, it will very easily.